spider wart is always so lovely. I've got three different kinds. I have three tags, but this one is blooming first. It's right next to the azalea, which has buds, and these bloom at the same time, and the pink and the purple are gorgeous together. These have been blooming for a few days. Today's April 11th. And I just tucked in there, and I absolutely love it. I haven't studied them yet. I'm trying to figure out the differences in varieties. This is another patch right there, which is huge. And there used to be two back here of different colors. And I think the other one was right in here, but I don't see it. I don't know if it got weeded last year. So there's a lot of little grassy stuff. I don't think that's it. This is a Tradescantia Ernestina. It looks like Ernestina. <laughs> uh, but I found online it's pronounced Ernestina. I actually have three spiderwort tags and it took me forever to figure out which variety or species was which species. And um, I have photos of all three. Um, two of them are healthy and the other one I can't find. But I finally have figured out that this one is the uh, Aaron... Ernestina. This one is also called the woodland spiderwort variety and that makes sense because of uh, how low it is to the ground. That's also what helped me identify this one because the other two are much taller and uh, this uh, variety is short, gets about 6 to 12 inches high. I believe mine's about 12 inches high. Um, the other thing that helped me to identify them is the color. Oh man, I spent a long time with the color. Uh, this is a lavender purple. They're all, all purple-like, but a uh, different kind of purple. So I had to think about my purple names. Apparently this uh, foliage also does not have a white coating on it like the other, like some of the other varieties. So I need to find one of the other varieties to observe that white color. It's very similar to the Ozarkana, which I'm in Missouri and we're in the Ozarks. So that's kind of cool. Um, but the Ozarkana, the flowers are lighter and they're also white, mostly white. They're so light, they're white. And it's also very similar to the Virgi Virginiana, something like that, from Virginia, which has a narrower leaf blade. There's so many varieties, it's so confusing. But I had a tag for this one, so I know it's the uh, Ernestiana. So this is in the Camelinaceae. Uh, family, which is the spiderwort or dayflower family. So the name Tradescantia is named after a father and son, both named John Tradescant. The um, father lived from 1570 to 1638, and the son lived 1608 to 1662. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Um, both were botanists and gardeners for King Charles I of England. That's pretty awesomeness. <laughs> so the common name of spiderwort could come from the way the flower hangs. So you see here that it doesn't really hang as well on the shorter variety I think is the older is the uh, other varieties but this here hangs so spiderwort 
could come from the way the flower hangs down like a spider, or it um, was used to treat spider bites by the Native Americans. This plant is a perennial, and um, it has uh, three petal flowers, so it's sometimes called the Trinity flower. Let's look. I love that. Look at the three petals. Absolutely adorable. So as we were looking here, multiple buds form in a cluster on each individual flower opens up only a few at a time for one day only. Therefore, the flowers bloom in succession. Oh, here's a good example. So here's how on the end of the stem, we have all of these buds and it looks like the top ones are opening first so they'll open in succession and they only bloom once so i guess this one here will bloom tomorrow and this one the next day and i guess if i counted how many buds there are i might get an idea of how many days this plant blooms there's a couple more down here Kind of cool. So when it's done blooming, you cut back the stems. Um, my other ones are very tall, that's easier to do. But uh, here's the stem. So I would cut it, I guess, back down to here where this leaf is coming out. And that encourages rebloom. I don't know as if this one has ever rebloomed. I'm going to pay attention this year. But I know my other varieties have rebloomed. Some of them twice, I think. So this is a uh, awesome thing, is that the Native Americans, and in particular the Cherokees, used this plant a lot. <laughs> the leaves were eaten as a salad green or fried with other greens. Um, the uh, parts of the plant were mashed up, I think the root I read, and rubbed on insect bites to relieve pain and itching. It's a good thing to remember if I'm ever in an emergency like an earthquake or something happens right now and I need medical help. <laughs> um, but pain and itching makes me think of poison ivy. Um, the root was mashed up to treat cancers and it was also, oh this is the part you want to be careful about, it was also used as a tea, as a laxative, or for stomach aches or female problems. But um, since it was uh, to treat spider bites, um, like uh, um, mashed up and rubbed on them to stop the pain and itching, that could be why it's called a spider wart. So in the spring, and I may do this next spring, I could just divide this clump in half and uh, plant another, plant one of them somewhere else to spread it in my garden. And since I really like this plant, I think I may just do that next year. Now I've heard that this plant is invasive, uh, mostly uh, because it uh, self-seeds. Now I have never found it to be invasive maybe I'm looking around I don't see any self-seeding uh, it could be different varieties self-seed more than other varieties or it could be that I just come along and weed um, the new uh, seeds that uh, they don't get a chance to uh, spread in that way um, we're going to come back and look at it looks beautiful with its azalea when it blooms and I'm going to also come back when my other one blooms. They do bloom at different times of the year. This one says it blooms April to May and the other one I've identified says June to September. So I'm wondering if that's one I know that it it uh, reblooms. So maybe this one, this variety doesn't. And that's why June to September is so long. And the other one I can't find anymore um, blooms May to September. So um, 
I'll uh, insert some pictures to show you the three uh, varieties I have. So here on the right side, that purple is the Concord grape variety. And um, I have that blooming in a nice clump. It's an Andersonian uh, variety. And the purple on the left is the Ohio spiderwort uh, smooth. And I got that at a native plant sale. And I only have one of it. My other plant is poking out just one bud there. I'll come back when it buds more. I love the color of this spiderwort. I spy my azalea blooming. I love how it looks with the spiderwort. It's so lovely. I hope it gets more blooms. Look at the spiderwort. It's gorgeous. It's one of my favorite. I want to spread it. I am pretty sure this is the Concord grape spiderwort that's now blooming. It's not tall like in previous years. I have a photo I'm going to share with you. See um, right there is a rose bush and here's the Concord grape and in this photo about where I'm sitting is probably the Ohio one and I think we actually moved it somewhere, but I bet you my husband weeded it. He's so good at weeding them. And that's why I'm taking over the garden and identifying my flowers and taking time to learn about them so we can know exactly what's planted where. I'm excited to know this is a Concord grape. In this photo I'm gonna share with you in the next clip, um, you'll see the uh, Concord grapes to the right and the Ohio uh, spider warts to the left. And the Concord grape is not as tall. And um, I did see this in the store and kind of got an identification of the color. But in my photo, these flowers are much taller, like, uh, you know, up in here. My notes say that the Concord Grape Spider Wart is about 24 inches high. Well, yeah, this is about 24 inches high right now. And 36 inches in width. I would say that's about true. Um, it says it blooms in mid-May to September or during the summer. It's not mid-May. Everything's blooming about a month early. We're um, here mid-April. It received the prestigious award of Garden Merit from the Royal Horticulture Society. It's sometimes also called a Tradescantia, where'd that go my notes, Andersonia but apparently that's an incorrect name. So um, when you see things on the internet um, that is confusing, it's actually um, an Andersonia hybrid group, but its name is simply Tr Tradescantia Concord grape, which it does look like a grape color. Definitely looks like different than the other one. This one um, is interesting because it's more leaves than it is plant. And I'm zooming in here to show you how this is coming out of the stem. But then there's this leaf that's really long. Coming all the way out here. And another leaf really long. I'm trying to get it to focus. Coming out that way. So... Um, the leaves are really, really, really tall um, and shooting out compared to the flowers. But you can still see the flowers. They like poke out and peek at you. And then the leaves go way out there. How strange is that? Plant does take up a lot of real estate in the garden, but I like it, so it's staying. And it does bloom multiple times. Oh, 
no, it's after work. This was open at lunchtime. I was super excited to see the other uh, variety of the spider wart. We must have moved it, or it moved itself in front of, and behind this tall phlox, because it used to be over here next to that spider wart. Well, you know what? I guess they all close up at night. Yay, I'm out in the middle of the day. So I'm going to baby this since I only have one stalk since it got transplanted. I'm excited that it's still here. See, picture of loveliness. Yay. It's planted right behind the tall flocks, which I think I'm okay with that as long as I can mark it. This one's actually my tallest variety, which is why it got moved down in the bed. But it's not as tall this year. Bet you next year it'll take off.